know the notion of someone abroad has got more money i don't even know where that comes from but it's real <coughs> this is the food no i can't eat <coughs> if you just go out just be ready to take at least minimum five photos inside of my mind in hopes that i can see them i pray that i can reach them god only knows if i make it out of hey guys and welcome back welcome to my channel if you're actually watching me for the first time thank you so much for clicking on this video now leave this place not subscribing join the family so that we can actually grow together so in today's video as you guys can tell i am just trying to be cool because i'm tired of just coming here and looking all serious without even having some time to laugh i am not that serious in person i honestly have a very high sense of humor and i like to crack jokes no i don't like to crack jokes i like to exaggerate stories and exaggerate everything so like you know what it's about time you guys got to see that version of me right here by actually giving you guys stories that are being told exaggeratedly so that you can also get to see this part of me so in today's video i'm doing a story time with you guys about my life abroad everything i have suffered everything i've gone through everything i have enjoyed everything i have learned so that you guys can actually get to tell if really it's worth it to leave home and go study far from your mother your father your friends and whatnot is it really worth it is it really good with all this going on racism and whatnot is it really good so like you know what i should actually give you guys this in story form and not in points form like these are the pros and these are the cons these are this no i was like let's let's give this a chance of it being a story if you guys are going to like this story you should actually tell me if you don't like it tell me so that i should end all this story time and i should just focus on point giving straight to the point you guys learn and we are okay so we are going to start the story from where let's go back in time 99 19 what no i'll just tell you in advance grab yourself something to eat because i've actually i don't know if you guys can actually see them i've got my popcorn i've got my chocolate I got my juice so that we can actually be taking mini breaks when we get tired of talking uh, before we actually get into the story let me tell you that in person i give good stories okay like but i don't really know if it's going to be coming out that perfectly on camera because you know when you're talking with people and they give you expression like ah are you serious is that what happened when you actually get excited to give this story but because it's in front of the camera i can't see those expressions i don't really know how it's going to go but if you guys are actually going to be having expressions and laughing and enjoying the story you should actually comment down below so that i should actually know that you guys also felt this story that was much all the time let's get into the story so one two three okay so where are we going to start it from from 2015 let's go back to 2015 10th of no was it 10th 9th of october i think yeah 2015 9th of october break time you can take a sip of your drink also or your water or whatever you're actually eating while you're watching me 9th of october yeah i can still remember the third day properly because it was memorable imagine a young girl a 17 year old zambian going to study abroad the first one in the family it was an achievement the whole family gathered my grandmother grandpa everyone the whole compound we came together to escort my less because she's going to study abroad <laughs> and at that moment i felt like i was the one you can't tell me nothing i was like who are you what can you who's who's the chance what are you going to tell me? Could it be? And the one happened. It, it, my parents were not shouting at me during that week because they were like, no, she's going abroad, what not? And that's exactly how I was feeling until the day came. We were going, escorted me to the airport, a whole group of family members, and I believe they were crying because they are going to miss the only child that makes the house warm, energetic, hyper, and noisy was me. And that girl was finally going, and I was like, I'm going abroad. What? I am the one, okay. So the day reached, we were at the airport and the plane came. We were using Emirates, I mean, Emirates it was Emirates. 
and i said bye to my family and i was excited at that moment even though it was going to be the first time me being on the plane and i was scared and i didn't eat anything because i was like i'm going to vomit so let me not eat and they i said bye to my parents and everyone else that was escorting me my friends my family members they were quite a lot all i was told was that they cried for like a whole week i mean did i cry not really i cried but it was inside i was like Anyway, so at that moment, the emotion I had was the excitement and the fear of being on the plane. So I wasn't like really thinking about it. I cried later on, but in that moment, I didn't cry. I was just scared about the whole idea of the plane. And my mother was like, be careful, this passport. Who can get with a passport? You just so there, sir. What? Keep this passport. You get. So like, I was just like, in that moment, of like, I need to keep my passport. The plane, I'm going to vomit, whatnot. But anyway, we got on the plane. The plane started. We were up in the sky. That was the beginning of a new life. The good part was that we were a lot of us. So, like, ah, uh ah, -uh, we're a lot. And I know of us, there are also some people that haven't been on the plane. So, if we're going to vomit, If we're going to vomit, we're going to vomit together. So, but I just kept it as if I've done that before, you know what I mean? So, the plane started off. It was in the night, so I wasn't seeing anything outside. And it didn't really feel anything the way we were explained. It was very comfortable, very nice, very chilled. The night and in the morning, we were at Dubai. It was a flight that was connecting from Zambia to Dubai and Dubai to Turkey. So, just to put it out there, I have been to Dubai just at the airport. <laughs> But it's okay. It's still Dubai, isn't it? So, isn't it? It's still Dubai. I've been to Dubai. Yeah, I mean. But even if it's just at the airport, I've been there. So, we went to Dubai and Dubai is Dubai. Like... Dubai International Airport is your gateway to one of the most dynamic cities in the world. It is designed to make your airport experience smooth and enjoyable and give you a first taste of the city beyond. I was lost in the midst of all those things. There was a whole lot of commotion. Dubai airport is busy, okay? Busy to an extent where you don't know if you're in a hotel, if you're at a shopping mall, if you're at the airport or what. It's so, so busy. And everyone knows what they're doing. So if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get lost. But the good part was, out of like a group of us, were one or two or three of them that actually knew these things. So we were just like following whatever they were doing. Until we kind of found our way and were told, okay, wait for a few hours, your plane is going to come, blah, blah. We waited. While we were waiting, we were actually given this coupon to actually have a meal at Dubai. And we saw McDonald's and we were like, hey, let's eat McDonald's. McDonald's. That was the first time I actually tasted McDonald's. And I was like, my life is about to become the best ever. I mean, McDonald's. Then, okay, let's take a break. And maybe even eat some chocolate. So, the butterfic. We reached Kuja. Eh. We waited. We ate McDonald's. Then we connected Zambia or Dubai to Turkey. It wasn't that long. Two hours. We reached Turkey. And Turkey was also a different place, okay? Different everything. But because I've already seen Dubai, I was kind of prepared. Like, okay, maybe the airport also is not that bad. And which was true. When we reached the airport, he was like... Like because I'd already seen Dubai, I'm like I I've seen this before. I mean, I'm now used to this. No, I was not used to the whole part that those people are actually looking at us like there's something wrong with us. When we just landed from the airport, everyone was looking like, you know, how when you're in bag in Africa, like, no, me, I'm not black, I'm that black, I'm that brown, I'm that yellow. What all those color categories that we give ourselves here yeah, when you're black, you're black. Because whether you're that brown, that light, gray, any shade, if you're going to be in a country where there are white people, you're going to show that you're actually black. And that is just what happened. We were black and black. And everyone was just like looking at us like, okay, break. Break time. Then now, yeah, they're looking, okay? They look at you weirdly. Like they want to figure out are you a human being or not? Because there are certain people in Turkey that have never seen black people, and the black person they see first is you. So they're just like, 
Who are you? Who are you? Are you? Who are you? Who are you? Like, I'm a human being. What do you want me to be? But yeah, they start to look. Then now we got here. We actually, our places were going to be different from each other. Like, all of us are going to be living separately. So now it starts to dawn like okay i've come i've come abroad now where are my friends i don't know where they've left them that hostel i don't know it and i don't even know where they're really taking me and next thing is the school where we're supposed to go the school is a little bit far from where we actually are living in the hostels the school is actually like a little bit far so now you have to find a way to get to that school and that was when we actually got lost okay I think we got lost like for two days we didn't know the way to school and we would just like leave the place never find a way and come back for like two days we are just never finding the place and that's one of the sad parts because you, you you just don't know what to do you don't know where to go you don't know which place is which and if you don't have someone that can actually be helping you you actually get lost and you cry literally guy like i want to go back home and then now the other thing school starts okay we start to learn the language you guys learning a new language can be stressing it can be heartbreaking especially a language that is not connected to the language that you already know turkish and english is different the teachers that are teaching you are actually teaching you in turkish so now how are you going to understand someone who's teaching you a language in turkish when you don't know anything that was the moment when people feel like i want to go back then for me, I don't, I, I would say the beginning, I didn't like it. Maybe after some time, you actually start to see the benefit of it. But while in the process, it's just, it's just a coin. Like you just hate it. You don't understand anything. You are actually failing and you're not understanding it. You're just like, <laughs> <coughs> I want my mother. Like I want my mom. I want to go back home. Then when such things start to happen, they start to move you actually start to realize i'm far from home okay then homesickness comes in you literally get homesick like i remember the first few months i think like two months or so i just wasn't feeling like no and i didn't know what it was i was like what's happening to me i'm failing to sleep i just feel stressed and whatnot but after some time i realized that was actually being homesick which is actually one of the something that you should actually prepare for if you are someone that wants to study abroad or even like live far from home is the fact that you're going to miss home especially if you're a person that is close with your family and you have those bonds you're going to feel the impact and that's where it was for me i missed home so much i miss my family i always used to i cried on a, a not a few a lot of occasions i cried a lot so long but there are some people that really manage that so well they didn't miss them so much they got used but for me it really took me so much so if you're such type of a person it's actually good for you to actually prepare your mind that you're going to be homesick and find a way to actually get over it and then the other thing that actually comes in is the weather okay i'm not like getting used to the place and i'm just settled not really settled but you know then we are waiting for snow to come it was exciting like when is the snow going to come and you know like snow you see it from afar like snow 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 comes the first day i was happy i remember that day like snow like i opened the window i woke up and opened the window it was just white I believe I, I believe I can fly. My dreams are coming true. My life is about to become awesome. Snow. Okay, we go out. Okay, then you actually notice the cold, the coldness that hits you. You want to cry. I hate this moment. I hate snow. I don't like snow. Not even a bit. Nothing can make you cry. The first year of being in Turkey, the cold almost killed me. I just didn't like snow anymore. Like the first day it was nice, cute, but now it becomes cold. And then you realize oh, all the clothes I came with, there are these boots my mom bought for me. I think those boots only lasted for two days in the snow. They literally opened up like, Psh! you can't wear this in snow. Like your clothes, your shoes, everything had to change. And not just change with the things that you came with because the jacket that I came with could not could not work at that moment. It needed something different. It needed something that could actually survive the cold. 
so if you want to say i'm going to fast from home you should actually take time to know how the weather is there and prepare yourself in that way like prepare yourself like this weather is going to be different like it can get caught as far as negative whatever and that's something i never experienced back home so prepare yourself for that and just like have it in your mind like it gets caught and that caught it can make your head thin your whole body like literally everything and it's just it's just hard but slowly the body actually gets used to it so now the cold comes in i've managed to survive it the other thing that was actually hard for me was the food you guys i would not eat anything when i came to take you for like three months i would just never eat this was me every time i'm tasting Turkish food okay like this is the food oh fourth break like this is the food No, I can't eat like that was me for like three months. I would never eat anything The only food I would eat was something I knew and then just from way back I used to be very choosy when it comes to food So if I don't know the food I'll be like it doesn't look nice It doesn't taste nice. I don't want I won't even force myself like just try to eat. No, no So the only food I knew was eggs potatoes bread these were the food I used to eat. Breakfast, lunch, supper. Breakfast, lunch, supper. Every day. Bread, eggs. Bread, eggs, potatoes. Bread, eggs, potatoes. To an extent where they actually made me sick. Because how are you going to be eating that every day and expect your digestion system to be okay? And now, that was another problem. Because now I was getting sick. I was failing to eat. I, I wanted to just go home. I was like, no. Oh. I want my mother, I want to go back home and the thought of I'm not going back home anytime soon made it even worse. <laughs> no way, no way. But over time I actually start to get used to it, start to enjoy it, and you start to learn a lot of different things. Now living for so long now and taking like months, I start to understand a little bit of Turkish, I start to have conversations, a little bit of us, you actually now start to know their culture, no longer just about the language, but you actually start to get to know the couch like, there's something that happened the first first time i came and i came to understand it only later on that oh that is actually what happened and a friend a turkish friend of mine asked me are you hungry do you want food and at that moment i was so so hungry like very hungry i couldn't even say yes i was like mm. i was waiting for my food okay i waited for hours the food didn't come up to date i was still up to now i'm still waiting for my food and then later on after a few months i actually realized doing like this for turkish is actually no can you imagine like this is yes when it comes to our culture and when it comes to zambia but like it's literally no for turkish people so that such type of funny experiences that you go through such that you be like i didn't know so i was like later on that's when i understood i, was like, I told that person i was hungry and they didn't give me food like, no way i actually said when it's this yes and no so such type of things you actually start to learn them over time when you actually start to get used and start to understand their culture. it comes to things like religion it's very important for you to actually know the country that you're going to when it comes to religion so like take it take it the 99 percent muslim countries yeah so here sundays are just like normal normal days unless if you're in a, in a, in a city where it's a little bit big and there's actually church but in my city at the moment there is no not change completely the other benefit i don't know if it's a pro or con based on how you're going to take it. portion of someone abroad has got more money i don't even know where that comes from but it's real i don't even know if it's a pro or con but people think you have more money than them the moment you just come to abroad like as if we really like we get money from somewhere and i don't i don't understand that but in general i feel like even people here actually have less money than people back home because they they don't have anyone to call for when they are stranded like it makes you become financially wise it has actually made me that way every money that comes my way i always like i need to find a way of using this properly because if i'm stranded i am going to be stranded alone the people here don't care the bills are going to come the rent the landlord doesn't care where you're going to get the money from they don't know you there's just a fixed date on the 10th give me my money that's all so now it makes you really think so so fast and it's another thing others can take it as a con because honestly such situations have caused many people to actually do certain things to make money because they're in abroad 
they can't manage to survive and the trip you're planning to be in another country it's very important for you to actually know your source of income so that you don't get very very stranded i have talked a lot let's take another break most people ask me like have you experienced a racism in turkey is there racism in turkey i would say no we're kind of loved here a lot of people like black people here because they'll be like let's take photos together if they see you they'll take a photo of you so if they're a person that doesn't like such you might hate it but if you're a person that likes be like pause i think i've posted for like a thousand photos in turkey some of them i don't even i don't even know how far i've reached because in a day if you just go out just be ready to take at least minimum five photos minimum five photos because they'll be like hello how are you can i take a photo with so you just be ready to actually just go out there and be posing like okay. know the country that you're going to especially as a black girl a country like taking they don't know about your hair they don't sell your hair products they don't sell wigs they don't sell whips they don't sell nothing they have their hair and their neck but you if you're going to come to a country like Turkey and you're a black girl don't carry clothes just carry wigs because there's no hair here so just on that note do you guys be wondering why i'll be coming here with the same hair for the five tenth time i've explained my situation there's no hair in taking and if there is it's only africans that are selling it and it's it's, it's expensive you know like it's really really expensive here you stick with with what you have so you can have like five weeks those are your only weeks for your whole life so guys, I've come to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Even though I was almost forgetting, I was actually telling you guys a story and I made it into a lecture and whatnot, whatnot. But hope you guys enjoyed it. But that's the whole summary of the whole experience of studying abroad, the language, racism, uh, the food, what else, the weather, everything that you just have to experience, financial problems and whatnot, a friendship and culture differences and all that hope you guys have seen or learned one or two things and hope you guys have actually gotten the pros that i was actually trying to bring and the cons actually trying to talk to you guys about hope you guys enjoyed it and also if you guys want me to continue doing story times like you can comment down below what type of story you actually want to hear from me even though hope you guys enjoyed it all in all thank you so so much for watching and from me it's don't forget to be the best version of you bye guys